out ladies, Mr. Smelly's on his way If you like strong fragrances then it's your lucky day I spray them on my clothes and I spray them in my hair I make it look so easy that it's just not fair Gent Scents, J Royal, Casket Scents and Triple Ink Stand back, make way, cause it's time for Mr. Stink When it comes to spraying fragrances I may be overzealous But I smell so good that Jeremy Fragrance is jealous! Here's a little list about fragrances for autumn I hope that you'll watch them by tomorrow you'll have bought them There's some that are old school and some are up to date If you wear them near a lady then she'll lay it on a plate It's not a guarantee and it's not really a promise But if you follow my advice you're gonna feel like an Adonis I may be over 40 and my hair may be thinning But when it comes to spraying fragrances I'm always the winning Hello everyone, welcome to my video listing the top 10 fragrances for autumn 2017. So these are my picks of what I think are great fragrances for autumn. I do always feel that these top 10 seasonal lists, uh, have a, they're, they're a little bit contrived and there's an element of BS about them because uh, the seasonality of fragrances is much more limited than these lists would perhaps have you believe. Also, for example, you know, when I'm thinking about an autumn scent, what really is the difference between autumn and winter in terms of what fragrances you would wear? Autumn's getting chilly, winter a bit more so. How does that affect the fragrances? It's difficult to say. So what I'm looking for in this list is I'm looking for fragrances that seem to conjure up the image or the idea of autumn to me in my mind and, and feel like they would that perhaps autumn or fall would be the most appropriate season for those fragrances. So maybe fragrances that uh, perhaps make us imagine the colour of amber or maybe have the note of amber in them for obvious reasons. Woody fragrances are going to be good here. Uh, we're moving away from really fresh, uh, soapy, aquatic or fresh citrus fragrances that we reach for more in the spring and summer. And we're looking at things maybe with some vanilla in there, some slightly oriental kind of fragrances. Fragrances with some warming qualities, a little bit more depth and richness, but there's not a huge dividing line, in my opinion, between autumn and winter in terms of fragrances. Let's get into the list, and again, with another bit of uh, bullshit that we get in these lists, I'm going to start off with a tie. So number 10, it's a tie between Eau de Missions and Roche Asman. So Eau de Missions by Le Cuvante de Menimes is a really beautiful and very inexpensive vanilla scent. We also have some Styrax myrrh, according to the bottle, uh, Virginia cedarwood and benzoin in there. It comes off as a very, very uh, crisp, likeable, easy to wear, unisex, vanillic kind of scent. Some people say it's a bit boozy, I kind of get that. Uh, but there's also a certain um, lightness about it that makes it very, very easy to wear in the daytime. It's not very, very heavy or rich. It does have good longevity, but despite being called a cologne. I really love this one. Extremely inexpensive. It was in my top vanilla list that I did in the last video. Great choice for autumn time. As is the one I'm tying it with, Rochas Man. Again, vanilla is a key note. There's a kind of coffee note. This is a gourmand fragrance and a little bit of a fruity raspberryness about this one. Came back, came out way back in 1999. It's absolutely lovely. I was wearing it the other day. It seems actually a really good choice for daytime in autumn because it's got a comforting sweetness about it, but it's not super heavy or dense or rich. And it seems like almost if you want a slightly sweet, almost fresh feel, uh, like and in the way that a fresh coffee bean can have a freshness or a fresh croissant, it seems like your work appropriate daytime autumnal scent that's really sophisticated, a little bit understated, but really, really yummy. So Rochas Man or Eau de Missions, both great choices for autumn. Okay, at number nine, I'm going to go with, and the order here, you know, there's not much in it between number one and number ten. Maybe the top one or two are my absolute favourites for autumn at the moment. But number nine, Dior Eau Sauvage Parfum. It's the old version. I guess that's why I'm putting it lower on this. It's maybe getting tricky now to find this. The 2012 released version, reformulated in 2017, but as it's so recent, of course, that you should still be able to find this one with a bit of uh, work. Eau Sauvage Parfum, only three ingredients, bergamot, myrrh, and vetiver. It comes across as smelling much more complicated and complex than that would have you believe. It's rich, it's warming, it's got a dense woodiness, a sort of incense-like feel about it. Of course, myrrh and incense, there's you know, an overlap there in how they smell. 
and it's got a really almost a little bit of a sweetness in, in, in the resiny quality that we get I think from the myrrh in this one very very dense and rich it does have a little bit of greenness from the bergamot it's really classy uh, suitable for dressed up occasions beast mode performance and it is one of those as soon as the weather starts to get that little bit chilly I feel really happy to reach for this one perhaps the most autumnal feeling Dior scent for me Obviously, it would work well in winter too. Next up on my list, I'm going with the House of Creed. It was in last year's list. It's going to be Royal Oud again. Royal Oud by Creed is famous for not having that much of an oud smell. And I can't pick out much oud as I recognize it. But what I do get in this scent is a lovely ashy quality that perhaps comes from a light type of oud that's being used, a Euro-friendly oud maybe. There's also some nice bergamot in the beginning and a lovely pink pepper note which can give a little bit of a crispness, a little bit of a rose-like sweetness as well. And a cedarwood and sandalwood combination in this one that is exquisite. So if you really like something woody, a little bit ashy with just that touch of exoticism coming from the oud that you probably won't notice as oud, but with a certain masculinity, depth, class and sophistication and if you've got the money Royal Oud by Creed is an absolute classic and definitely the one for me if I had to say the most autumnal Creed Royal Oud would be a great choice unlike a lot of their others which are really fresh now having said that Eau Sauvage Parfum might be the most autumnal one from Dior here's the other contender in my mind and that is Fahrenheit Parfum this one has a really dominant vanilla note in it which kind of substitutes in there for the petroleum note in the original Fahrenheit. We've also got Sicilian Mandarin, I'm reading the notes off the back here, Violet as in the original Fahrenheit, and a Leather Accord. Bourbon vanilla is in there too, so it, there's a really nice sweetness, but it's still got that leatheriness and something of the original Fahrenheit DNA, but it's a little bit easier to wear, I think, very smooth, more likeable, more crowd-pleasing, but without being dumbed down or losing sophistication. A beautiful, underrated scent, perhaps standing in the shadow of its uh, forefather, the Eau de Toilette, but Fahrenheit Parfum from Dior, the only company with two in this list. It is absolutely brilliant. I love it. Check it out as a scent for autumn and perhaps winter this year. Number six, and I'm doing another tie, naughty me. It's going to be Zerzhov Naxos, brilliant fragrance, and Thierry Mugler's Pure Havan. These two are often compared. Pure Havan by Thierry Mugler, sometimes described as a cherry tobacco type scent pretty good description it's also got a real uh, dose of patchouli and a little bit of the amen tar note that we get with all the amen flankers from uh, Terry Mugler. I don't own a bottle yet and it's the only one I don't have any of that I'm putting in this. I do have a small sample that I used in an earlier video. I always smell it when I'm in the store. I think it's a brilliant choice. Very much okay for all ages because Mugler scents tend to have a certain sort of playfulness and sweetness that can be really attractive for younger people and I think Pure Havan would be a great choice. Not too expensive either. Sometimes compared to it then is Zerzhov Naxos which I only have a decant of. This one again has a, a really prevalent tobacco note there's cinnamon in here and there's a, a nice sweetness and a vanilla element and some honey in this one along with a little bit of freshness and some bergamot it's absolutely beautiful has that kind of honeyed tobacco note with a certain freshness in there as well very sophisticated just a little bit more sophisticated than the perhaps slightly more in your face smell of pure havana i like both wouldn't be redundant to own both but for me at the moment when i'm feeling like some sweet cinnamon smells and a little bit of sophistication naxos by Zerzhov works for me. Great autumnal feel, I think, definitely for this scent. Next up, it was in last year's list as well, and it's well worthy of staying in the list. It's Valentino Womo Intense. I'm excited to try the new release of Womo Noir Absolu coming out, uh, which is out, but I haven't smelled it. I think it's apparently somewhat similar. This one has a really nice leather note. It has a lot of vanilla in it, and it has iris. So it has the Diorum Intense tile type iris note, but a sort of chocolatey orangeness in it as well, which makes it a little bit maybe younger smelling, uh, a little bit more of a crowd pleaser, and the vanilla in there is really nicely done. So if you like the Diorum or Diorum Intense type scents, looking for something similar where there's not an issue about reformulations. This one's really rich and powerful in the only formulation we have, as far as I'm aware, the original version from 2016. Beautiful, sweet, leather, iris, cacao, maybe, or a chocolate orange type note I get in this one. Fantastic scent, great performance, young or old, uh, great for dressed up, mainly nights out, mainly, but uh, definitely don't have to be, it's not really a f big formal vibe about this one, quite versatile for night out to situations in the season of autumn or fall. Valentino Womo Intense. 
Next on my list, now anyone who's watched a few of my videos will probably notice I quite like barbershop star scents, so uh, you know they don't always have any seasonality spe specificity about them, but I went for, for my barbershop scent for the fall, Histoire de Parfum 1725, sometimes known as 1725 Casanova, named after the Italian romancer of yesteryear. So this one has got bergamot, it's got some citrus notes, but it's got a uh, uh, grapefruit note as well, but it has got uh, a licorice note and almond in there. There's also quite a lot of vanilla, and we have sandalwood, cedarwood, and amber. So a lot of those kind of autumnal feeling notes that we look for around this time of year are in there, but it still has that sort of fresh barbershop-y element to it as well. And lavender, of course, is more or less obligatory for a barbershop scent. This is a beautiful example, often compared to Invasion Bar Bar, by MDCI Parfums. I think I slightly prefer it and I definitely prefer the price. It's beautiful, it's a little bit sweet, it's a dandified barbershop scent for the modern man and if you can afford it I think people of all ages can look at this one even if you don't like some of the more old school smelling traditional aromatic fougeres. You should definitely try sampling. 1725 from Histoire de Parfum as the colder weather approaches this could give you a real touch of class. So, getting up to the top of the list now, this one again was in my list last year, and it's staying in the list this year. It's Aqua de Parma, a house I really like, and it's Colonia Leather. So, the most autumnal smelling Aqua de Parma for me is this one. It still has a little bit of freshness with some citrus notes. I think it's mandarin or tangerine. The key thing there, of course, is we've got a leather note in this one, which is very similar to the kind of leather accord that we get in Tom Ford's Tuscan Leather. So, it's as if you've taken an Aqua de Parma citrusy cologne, crossed it with a Tom Ford's Tuscan leather, so it makes it a little bit less heavy, maybe less cloying than Tuscan leather, a bit more wearable, perhaps uh, just a little bit more sophisticated and less of a ruffian. So it's taken the rough edges off that one. I don't think it's dumbed it down, so really nice woody notes in this one. The Aqua de Parma signature citrus thing is there a bit, but it's got that depth from the leather and it's very, very pleasant, grown up, sophisticated, a really mature smelling scent, I think and for dressed up occasions in autumn. Maybe when it gets to winter, you might want to go with Colonia Oud, but again, leather would work in the, uh, in the winter too. Next up then, the penultimate one, number two in the list, Chanel Egoist, a, an acquisition for me since my last autumn or fall top 10. Chanel's Egoist is an absolutely underrated scent from Chanel, a masterpiece. Came out first in 1990. Yes, it does have a slightly old school feel, perhaps, uh, and it's it's very rich. It's got cinnamon. We've got sandalwood in there, an excellent sandalwood note. It's very spicy. It's a spicy, woody, slightly sweet scent. There's a bit of vanilla, and there's also some mandarin or tangerine in the top. Very, very interesting, unusual scent. I've not smelled many things at all that I can compare this to, so you really do just have to go and smell it to get an idea how it smells. I can't say it's a cross between this one and that one by other houses. It's really slightly unique, I think, and I really enjoy this one. Great performer, um, very masculine smelling, and yet it's sweet and it's spicy. It's seductive. It has a real niche quality. It could be a Chanel Les exclusive, if you ask me. But it's just in their regular designer line, not that easy to find because you have to go to the bigger stores for them to actually stock this one. But uh, well worth checking out when you see it. Chanel Egoist for autumn. Please check it out. Now, finally, the winner, my number one scent for autumn 2017. Uh, it's still number one. It was number one last year. It's Bogart Pour Homme from the house of Jacques Bogart. I absolutely love this fragrance still. I wear it all year round, to be honest with you, but as autumn approaches, it seems more appropriate than it perhaps was sometimes in the summer because it's a rich, it's a deep scent, it's a really powerful to performer. Some people say it's a cherry tobacco scent. Neither of those notes are in the note listing. What is in the note listing? There's lavender and there's tonka bean, so there is a bit of a maybe a barbershop feel about this one, but it's it's got a lot more going on. It doesn't just feel like a barbershop scent. Some say it's a cross between Jean Paul Gaultier Le Mal and Thierry Mugler's Pure Havane. There's more to it that, than that, but there's some truth in that too. Maurice Roussel was the perfumier, 2004 was the year. It's a beast mode scent. It's strong, it's rich. It's got lavender, it's almost barbershop elements, but it's got this kind of really gutsy, sweet, likeable thing happening here. Some people say it smells a bit synthetic. I can see how you might think that. Maybe it doesn't exactly smell like a niche fragrance, but it just smells nice, likeable, hangs around in the air really well, very masculine, yet sort of sweet with a certain poweriness in there. 
great depth, brilliant, brilliant quality fragrance that I just enjoy and brings a smile to my face every time I, I wear it, same as it did a year ago when I did this list then. Bogart Pro, my number one choice for autumn 2017. Let me know what you thought of my picks. They are my personal choices. I've avoided a lot of the obvious choices like La Nuit de L'Homme, which I do like, but I just like these a bit more. And of course, I'm 40 and my taste is is formed a little bit by my age and what I think is appropriate for me, but I have tried to give ones that will work for people of all ages to some extent, but yeah, I'm leaning a little bit more towards a mature set than some people would probably prefer. Let me know what you thought of the list. I'm really interested, good or co bad comments, put them down there in my nether regions, they won't hurt me, and I will see you in the next video. Remember, whatever you're doing in life, let's project, goodbye.